Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video of me sat here without a guitar. Well, it's there, but... <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say a huge, huge thank you to um, you all, basically. We just hit 200,000 subscribers, which is like really, really weird for me to say and believe and I still don't think that it's real, but it says that I have, so there we go. <laughs> this video is a little bit different, I know I say that pretty much every time recently, but it is, I promise. I also just moved house last week, so I'm coming to you from a corner of the room that is not just knee-high in boxes so um yeah because the rest the rest of the place really is <laughs> i thought it'd be really fun um to basically show you exactly the sort of thing that i played when i was a beginner when i first started playing the guitar a lot of the pieces that i have and that i found because i went back to my parents house recently and dug through all of my old music books and it was a really surreal experience but um, and quite a funny one as well. I actually found, I'll show you. <laughs> I found this, which is my first ever um, music folder and it's got a lot of my, well, first ever music in it. Um, it's Winnie the Pooh and it says, friends come in all sizes, which is nice. <laughs> so I have gotten some of the things out of that folder, which I kind of thought, hmm, that'd be interesting to play back through and just explain to you guys in what kind of order I did them in and what the process was. I have kind of split this into four different stages. So what I wanted to do was to take you from very, very beginner through to playing a piece such as Lagrima by Francisco Tarrega. These aren't kind of stages that have been set out in a book or anything, but as I was going through my music that I found um, from when I was younger, I kind of put it into my head a bit categorically as to, okay, yeah, that would all fit together, that would all fit together. And it all led to what would be a piece of um, kind of the same standard of uh, uh, as Lagrima. When I teach, a lot of people tend to come to me with, um, you know, pieces that they might have half been through or half learned and find themselves getting a little bit stuck, um, maybe at a part that requires a certain technique that they might not have covered or... So my aim within these four stages is to build up to certain techniques that might be required from a piece um, such as Lagrima. So there might be a simple barre or you know even a half barre or you know whatever it is, a harmonic, um, and just kind of make sure that by the time we get to that stage, we have covered the aspects that we need to cover before we get there, and we're not just going into it. Um, we're kind of crossing our fingers like yeah I like this piece and it'll work and you know there's a lot of groundwork um, that we can do to really set ourselves up well for a piece that we want to learn. So before we get started like I said before there are a lot of different things um, that I'm not going to speak about today purely because I wanted this to be a little bit of fun just about the kind of pieces that I played when I was younger and also for it to hopefully be um, helpful to you. It's not all of the pieces that I learned because unfortunately I didn't keep all of the music nor do I have a good memory at all. So I do have kind of little bits of paper of just random things that I kind of saw and thought, oh, I remember playing that. I've tried to make some sense of it because like I said, I had a few different teachers when I was younger and it all kind of got mixed up. And I also was um, mainly and solely playing uh, pop and rock uh, songs for a long long time so the majority of that folder the Winnie the Pooh folder that you saw earlier is full of tablature and just chord shapes and things like that um, which obviously isn't what I do now so I've picked uh, the stuff that kind of led me through the classical bit um, and yeah it might be a bit of a mis mishmash mishmash mismatch I don't know what I'm trying to say so when I first made the transition over to classical guitar um, there were a lot of different things that I wasn't aware of and didn't really know and I didn't even use the right sort of guitar for a number of years. Um, I played on an acoustic guitar, so all steel strings, and my hand position was like this, which I've talked about in other videos, and yeah. So there was a lot of different things that needed sorting out on my part. <laughs> um, I didn't read music at all. I did use a few different things to help, so a lot of teachers do this. Um, to help with you know reading music 
you can remember the notes on the stave in different ways. So I think I used to remember the notes um, on the lines of the stave. So if the notes on the first line, it would be an E. So I so basically kind of made a bit of a centri sentence. So it would be every good boy deserves football. So that's how I remembered it. Um, you know, if there was a note on the second line up, every good, then that would be a G, B, boy, and so on. Um, and then for the spaces in between the lines, uh, it spells face, so F-A-C-E. So that's a really common way of learning how to read the notes on the stave. Obviously for guitar and for other instruments as well, we have to read notes below and above the stave, and that's something that I was, it just took me so long to learn because I was like, I've already learned the ones on the stave, that took me long enough, let me kind of just stay with those for a bit. And yeah, I didn't want to know about the ledger lines and about bass notes and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, it took me a long time to, to learn the bass notes, which is so, so important as a guitarist. And I think as soon as I kind of realized and started to read more music, I thought there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get away with not reading ledger lines and bass notes because they're in everything that we play. So I had sheet music like this. So this is stuff that I literally found a few days ago and um, kind of had that feeling. I remembered that, oh God, that's how I actually learned where the notes were on the guitar. And so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this at all. I will try and put it somewhere that you can see it better. And it basically is like a tablature and then it says exactly where, you know, in just in first position, it ex says exactly where the notes are on the guitar which insanely useful if you don't know. And then um, there are kind of different, different things using those notes that you have to try and work out and read and so on and so on. And it, it literally is, the more you do that, the more, you know, the easier it is to remember where the notes are. Aside from the actual process of learning how to read music and learning where the notes are on the guitar, um, there are a few other things as well that kind of need to be addressed before we go into playing certain things. Another one of those being posture, how to hold the guitar and technique with our hands, which are kind of all very different things. <laughs> um, firstly, it's important to get the posture. I'm not gonna kind of go into this in too much detail now. Um, if you guys would find it interesting, then I can do another video on this, but these are all things that are kind of um, assumed before I'm going into, you know, what I'm gonna go into. So yeah, there's posture, it's how to hold the guitar so that it's comfortable, so that your shoulders aren't like this and your legs aren't here, there and everywhere. Um, and so that you don't get back problems. Then comes the process of actually putting your hands on the guitar um, and getting the, the technique for both of the hands too. So I would tend to say, um, I'd recommend starting with the left hand first and getting the positioning and the technique around that um, as good as possible before starting with the right hand. It's not gonna be a quick fix. It's not gonna be, okay, got the left hand, then get the right hand, done, 20 minutes. Okay, let's go to play a piece. Um, it will take a while and you don't have to not play until it's perfect. Of course, nobody's technique is perfect. Um, it just has to be kind of remembered each practice session to pay attention to it because otherwise, you know, especially as beginners, it really does change and change throughout practice sessions and bad habits start to kick in and all of a sudden we're playing like this. And, you know, so it's very, very important. Yeah, so I then concentrated on uh, finger alternation because believe it or not I literally would play everything with one finger I mean literally everything um, I tried to play really really fast with one finger as well and just thought that that was the way to do it <laughs> um, until I kind of realized I'd actually if I got a bit of like a this is gross but if I got a bit of like a callus on one finger because I, I used to play a lot um, without nails as well so I'd get like really sore fingers I'd just switch to another finger, which would pro probably be my end finger, so my middle finger. Um, and I'd just do the same with that, and my hand was just like... <laughs> um, so yeah, don't... Um, yeah, learn from my mistakes, put it that way. <laughs> I then spent a long, long time concentrating on I, M, I, M, I, M, over and over in absolutely everything that I did, um, including little exercises like this, which I found. So I'm not sure if you can see again, but hopefully you'll be able to somewhere. Um, it says alternation and scales. And basically what it is, it's literally an exercise that starts on M and it's just M, I, M, I, M, I, it just goes. And so on. 
um, just all around C major. And then it goes on and then there are little parts that kind of introduce maybe uh, little rhythms and stuff like that. But yeah, the, the kind of the main point of that obviously is to just get the alternation. Um, I think the alternation between sort of M and A and I and A and all of that came much, much later. So for now it was just concentrating on not using one finger for everything because I very much relied on that. I've also just found some exercises um, that are basically write the letters under the notes and they're all bass notes. <laughs> um, so my teacher clearly realized that I couldn't read bass notes quite soon, but it truly is one of those things. Once you've got it, you've got it, you know, and you get to the point where you see a few of them on the page and your fingers just know where to go. You know, you concentrate on it in first position first, obviously, which is the most common position to play in, especially at this level. Um, and then you work your way up the fretboard in different ways, through different pieces, through different studies. And yeah, it really doesn't take a massive, 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 massive amount of time if you do it in the right way, I promise. <laughs> I'm slowly kind of working my way through the first lot of pieces slash studies slash exercises um, out of the four small sections that I wanted to kind of show you. This is a little duet that, um, that I would play, I think I would play the second part, which is just bass notes, and then my teacher would play the first. I found it really, really like cool to be playing with somebody else, even though it was the simplest thing, um, you know, having that kind of experience of playing with somebody else at an early stage really kind of offers something different and it shows, at least for me as well, it kind of made me really look forward to playing with other people when I was a little bit better. And that's something that I've always enjoyed. So I think if, if you can kind of introduce that at as early as possible, um, especially to help with the music reading process, the earlier the better. And it also kind of encourages, I think for sight reading especially, because the student, like I remember the feeling of first kind of playing with somebody else and feeling like, oh, I can't stop. You know, they're going on. I can't kind of turn around and go backwards and correct what I just maybe did wrong. And that's a really useful uh, mentality to have when you're sight reading. The last little piece that I've just found from this uh, section um, is Yellow Submarine. <laughs> this was basically to teach me how to read a tie in music. So when a note is tied to another one. And that was pretty helpful because obviously everybody knows the tune, the Yellow Submarine. Um, so you could kind of hear it. I think as a beginner, it makes much more sense when you already know it and you can kind of, you can hear it in your head and think, oh, that's what that is. That's how you would write it down. So it literally goes, Something else I would highly recommend as well um, for when you're just starting out, you want to practice alternating um, fingers, including A, maybe you want to add A in there as well. Um, Saw's Introduction to the Guitar, Opus 60, is really, really good. It's just got very, very short, um, I think they're about 25? Yes, 25. <laughs> um, within the set and they get progressively more difficult, but I recommend maybe just like the first two or three. They're really, really good for just sort of general simple reading, getting used to reading the notes on the stave um, and then they kind of gradually introduce two notes at a time and then they concentrate on bass notes, etc, etc. But yeah, that's um, Saw's Introduction to the Guitar, Opus 60, is um, a good introduction to the guitar, believe it or not. <laughs> so now we're on to the second group of pieces that are hopefully going to lead us up to playing something like Lagrima by Tarraga. This second group basically introduces playing the thumb and a finger at the same time. So two notes at once, um, mainly just open strings for now, but it basically um, puts those two things that we did in the first group together. So I think when you first go to playing two notes at once, it really feels like quite a big step. Um, and you kind of see it on the page and think, oh my God, how do I do that? <laughs> or at least I remember feeling like that as well. But I think, especially in terms of technique, there's a lot in preparation for that, that we need to be able to kind of move the thumb in the right way and it's not getting in the way of the fingers and things like that. But um, yeah, so this is the kind of thing that I progressed onto from exercises and pieces such as the ones that we just looked at. Like I said, these pieces um, and studies and things are just ones that I have found. I had so many others that I just have no idea where they are now. Um, but yeah, I kind of went rooting through the books and these were some that I saw kind of my little 
uh, annotations on and thought, oh, I'll show those to people because they're funny <laughs> and hopefully a little bit useful. Anyway, the piece that I've got here, uh, Russian Dance, hopefully you can see it a little bit. It's got my awful, awful annotations on it of basically just naming the notes above the stave. <laughs> I clearly still struggled with reading music at this point um, because I've made that very clear on the, on the page. I'm going to kind of whiz through a little bit of it, um, which is funny because I obviously haven't played this in about 12 years. <laughs> so the last time I played it, I'd have probably been about this big. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's have a go. <laughs> strange do well. I also remember it sounding more like... Okay, so yeah, as you could probably tell, there were more, like the bass, the bass strings um, that are in that piece are pretty much just open strings apart from, apart from an E here and there. But yeah, I think that's a pretty good kind of progression from the other stuff. Um, I would have played it a lot slower, obviously. On the same page is a little etude by Karuli, which I'll try and straighten out and play for you. It's literally two lines long, but again, is I think a small progression from what I just played. And this is also um, a grade one exam piece, apparently, or was back then. I don't know whether I actually did my grade one. I might have just done grade two. If I did grade one, I would have played this. So we'll see if I remember. <laughs> hard for grade one. <laughs> then again, it probably would be more... But, yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's, yeah, so obviously that's probably, I think, a little bit harder than the other one that I just played, the Russian dance, um, purely because you have the... much more fingered bass notes in there. But yeah, gosh, grade one. Crazy. <laughs> okay, this next piece, I think you'll recognize. Do I need to explain it? Maybe. I played this for my grade two guitar exam. Um, I have very vivid memories of playing this for my grade two guitar exam. Anyway, see if you recognize it. Um, yeah, I think you will. There we go. So, Spring from the Four Seasons by Vivaldi. Oh my gosh, okay, so I've just found this Fandango, like, um, this little piece kind of wedged in between all my other papers, um, which I think I remember looking at it. I haven't, I literally haven't seen this piece of paper for so long, but I think I had like a favourite piece, which was definitely a Fandango when I was much, much younger. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is it. I'm just gonna play through it, because I think it's the one. That was my favourite piece for literally I just played it hours on end. So after you've gotten your head a little bit more around the um, playing two notes at a time, playing with the thumb and the fingers, maybe small chords. I know I haven't really got there yet within these groups, but um, yeah, so still within the second group of pieces, 
leading up to that lag rumor moment. I'd probably then recommend going on to something more um, developed, kind of like a, a bit of a piece-like study. So something I'd recommend maybe is looking more into the Saw studies, uh, Fernando Saw. And this one that I found the sheet music for that I obviously did um, when I was learning at this stage um, is number one in, uh, I think it's called 24 Very Easy Exercises, Opus 35, Book 1. Um, and yeah, you might recognise it. It's one of the more well-known of the Saw studies. <laughs> study does is kind of introduce you to um, a few different things. I mean, obviously your thumb is working a little bit more, um, well, just a little bit more. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of the baseline's moving more than what we've had before. And also you, it introduces these sort of little passages of the... So you get repeating phrases which just cry out for a little bit of attention when it comes to dynamics. So. I think this is mainly, this kind of standard of, of um, study or piece is the kind of first step to starting to think about how to put dynamics into our playing, which is really, really important. And when you start to do it at this level, it's very, um, it's much easier to sort of implement it later down the line and it feels more natural. Thank you very much for watching part one of this video. Please do go and watch part two. Um, it wasn't originally meant to be a two part video, but you guys know how I like to talk and talk and talk. So please do go and check that out. Um, this was the first two groups of pieces. Part two will cover the last two groups of pieces and we'll finally get to Lagrima. So yeah, see you there.